debt settlement, also known as debt arbitration, debt negotiation or credit settlement, is an approach to debt reduction in which the debtor and creditor agree on a reduced balance that will be regarded as payment in full. In the UK, you can appoint an arbiter or legal entity to negotiate with the creditors. Creditors often accept reduced balances in a final payment and this is called full and final settlement but with debt settlement the reduced amount can be spread over an agreed term. Debt settlement is often confused with debt consolidation or debt management. In debt consolidation and debt management, the consumer makes monthly payments to the debt consolidator, who takes a fee and passes the rest on to the creditors. This way, creditors continue to receive payments each month. In debt settlement, the consumer makes monthly payments, out of which the debt settlement company takes its fees for the legal work or negotiation and payments are paid to the creditor. Unlike UK, Debt management There are no monthly management fees. The debt settlement company may get the creditor to accept a settlement of 40 pence in the pound, but the client pays 50 pence in the pound. The debt settlement company benefit from the extra 10 pence in this case. In the UK, creditors such as banks, credit card, loan companies and other creditors are already writing off huge amounts of debt. Most creditors are open to negotiations and are willing to accept reductions of 50% or more. Debt settlement allows the public to spread payments out over a set term, instead of having to pay a lump sum in one go which is the case with full and final settlement. Many people are taking advantage of debt settlement instead of conventional debt management because they have not seen debt management offer the benefits sold to them. UK Debt settlement is not to be confused with full and final settlement where debt management companies have been known to hold on to client funds in which case the creditors get nothing until they decide to settle. Furthermore, the debt management company usually instructs the consumer not to make any payments to creditors. The intended effect is to scare creditors into settling the debt for less than the full amount. Typically, however, creditors simply begin collection procedures, which can include filing suit against the consumer in court. As long as consumers continue to make minimum monthly payments, creditors will not negotiate a reduced balance. However, when payments stop, balances continue to grow because of late fees and ongoing interest. This practice of holding client funds is regarded as unethical in the U.S. and U.K. U.S. Debt settlement differs slightly. There are several indicators that few consumers actually have their debt eliminated by full and final settlement. A survey of U.S. Debt settlement companies found that 34.4% of enrollees had 75% or more of their debt settled within three years. Data released by the Colorado Attorney General showed that only 11.35% of consumers who had enrolled more than three years earlier had all of their debt settled, and when asked to show that most of the customers are better off after debt settlement, industry leaders said that would be an unrealistic measure. Consumers can arrange their own settlements by using advice found on websites hire a lawyer to act for them, or use debt settlement companies. In a New York Times article Cindy Geards, an associate professor at the University of Illinois Law School, states, done correctly, can absolutely help people. However, stopping payments to creditors as part of a debt settlement plan can reduce a consumer's credit score from 65 to 125 points with higher impacts on those who were current on their payments prior to enrolling in the program, and missed payments can remain on a consumer's credit report for seven years even after a debt is settled. Some settlement companies may charge a large fee up front, which ignores a rule from the Federal Trade Commission, or they take a monthly fee from customer bank accounts for their service, possibly reducing the incentive to settle with creditors quickly.
One expert advises consumers to look for companies that charge only after a settlement is made, and charge about 20% of the amount by which the outstanding balance is reduced. Other experts say debt settlement is a flawed model altogether and should be avoided. History As a concept, lenders have been practicing debt settlement for thousands of years. However, the business of debt settlement became prominent in America during the late 1980s and early 1990s when bank deregulation, which loosened consumer lending practices, followed by an economic recession placed consumers in financial hardships, with charge-offs increasing. Banks established debt settlement departments staffed with personnel who were authorized to negotiate with defaulted cardholders to reduce the outstanding balances in hopes to recover funds that would otherwise be lost if the cardholder filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Typical settlements ranged between 25% and 65% of the outstanding balance, alongside the unprecedented spike in personal debt loads. There has been another rather significant change, the 2005 passage of legislation that dramatically worsened the chances for average Americans to claim Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection. As things stand, should anyone filing for bankruptcy fail to meet the Internal Revenue Service regulated means test, they would instead be shelved into the Chapter 13 debt restructuring plan. Essentially, Chapter 13 bankruptcies simply tell borrowers that they must pay back some or all of their debts to all unsecured lenders. Repayments under Chapter 13 can range from 1% to 100% of the amount owed to unsecured creditors, based on the ability of the debtor to pay. Repayment periods are three years or five years, under court-mandated budgets that follow IRS guidelines, and the penalties for failure are more severe. Process Debt settlement is the process of negotiating with creditors to reduce overall debts in exchange for a lump sum payment. A successful settlement occurs when the creditor agrees to forgive a percentage of total account balance. Normally, only unsecured debts not secured by real assets like homes or autos can be settled. Unsecured debts include medical bills and credit card debts, not student loans, auto financing or mortgages. For the debtor, this makes obvious sense, they avoid the stigma and intrusive court-mandated controls of bankruptcy while still lowering, sometimes by more than 50%, their debt balances. Whereas, for the creditor, they regain trust that the borrower intends to pay back what he can of the loans and not file bankruptcy. Negotiating with a collection agency or junk debt buyer is somewhat similar to negotiating with a credit card company or other original creditor. However, many collection agencies will agree to take less of the owed amount than the original creditor, because the junk debt buyer has purchased the debt for a fraction of the original balance. As a part of the settlement, the consumer can request that collection is removed from the credit report which is generally not the case with the original creditor. Even if the removal of the collection account from the consumer credit report has been successfully achieved as a condition of settlement during negotiations, the negative marks from the original credit card company will still remain, according to Maxine Sweet, a spokeswoman for credit reporting agency Experian. Professional Debt Settlement Depending on the country, different laws regulate professional debt settlement companies. In the United States, debt relief companies are required to provide information in advance of a consumer signing up for the services, including the cost and the terms. A legitimate company will use a Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation insured trust account. Once enough funds are built up the negotiation process can begin with each creditor individually. Trust accounts, also known as special purpose accounts, are often held by a bank and managed by a bank agent. Accounts can also be held by creditors or may be sold to collections agency for an average of 15 cents on the dollar, in which case debt can still be negotiated. A consumer makes monthly payments to the debt settlement company or to the bank who holds the trust account. 
A portion of each payment is taken as fees for the debt settlement company, and the rest is put into the trust account. The consumer is told not to pay anything to the creditors. The debt settlement company's fees are usually specified in the enrollment contract, and may range from 10% to 75% of the total amount of debt to be settled. FTC regulations effective October 27. 2010 restrict debt settlement companies from collecting any fees from a debtor client for services until settlement with the creditor has been reached and at least one payment made. Advantage is settlement companies generally package their settlements into a larger bulk settlement with the creditor for 35% to 50% of the existing balances. The debt settlement companies typically have built up a relationship during their normal business practices with the credit card companies and can come to a settlement agreement quicker and at a more favorable rate than a debtor acting on their own. With the current economic crisis, more and more credit card companies may be willing to settle existing credit card debts rather than add to their already large written-off bad debt. Disadvantage is debt settlement companies generally take a percentage of the savings of the forgiven debt as the fee for their services. It does take a team of people to work on the accounts, and of course, the time. Some people do their own taxes, some people don't have the time or know how. Same thing. The dropout rate of debt settlement programs is high if a monthly plan is greater than 36 months at 50% and consumers who find themselves in these sorts of debt situations tend to have trouble sticking to a structured payment program for an extended period of time. Plans 36 months or less have a completion rate of over 85% good settlement companies will arrange monthly update calls. Establish a plan where you could miss a payment or two or finish the plan six months earlier if you are consistent with all monthly payments. Credit card accounts typically go into collection after they're charged off typically 180 days after the last payment on the account. The debt settlement companies may not handle calls from the credit card companies nor the collection agencies. Calls will slow down as the settlement company makes contact with the creditors. Legal action can be taken against the creditor if they violate the FDCP Act. A good settlement company works with their clients to protect them. Debtors can be sued by creditors seeking to recover debts and interest. This can be avoided by using companies with good standings and practices that protect consumers from these procedures. Do-it-yourself debt settlement. It is possible for a consumer to imitate the methods of professional debt settlement companies and many people report success in negotiating a debt settlement for themselves. Initiation of negotiations can begin by calling the customer service department of the credit card company. In general, the credit card company will only deal with the consumer when the consumer is behind on payments but capable of making a lump sum payment. A payment plan is not an option. The credit card company will demand that the consumer make a lump sum payment of the settlement amount. Advantages by negotiating debts on their own. Debtors are able to save in fees that would otherwise be paid to a debt settlement company or an attorney. This option also gives the debtor more control over the process which may, or may not, be a motivational factor to continue successfully completing the process. Disadvantages While the do-it-yourself option offers the debtor more control and reduced fees, there are negatives generally associated with this option. Creditors have their own policies regarding debt settlement and certain creditors will not settle directly with consumers. Additionally, consumers may face less advantageous settlement rates on their own, as opposed to debt settlement companies that have relationships with creditors and can often package bulk settlements. Consumers may face difficulty getting through to decision makers or long delays in any negotiations or paperwork processing with the creditors. Furthermore, every creditor has different processes and procedures in how they determine settlement offers and terms. Not knowing those can leave a consumer in the dark. Settlement companies have a customer service department to assist consumers with any questions or difficulties that arise during their program.
This support can be particularly valuable, especially in cases where creditors become aggressive. If an account were to escalate to legal status, a consumer settling on their own would need to seek out a third party for help. Unfamiliarity of the settlement process can be intimidating and mistakes can be made. You will need to beware of fine print and carefully review any correspondence, proposed settlement or agreement with a creditor. Settlement agreements should be reviewed very carefully, perhaps by a third party, to make sure that all the terms are those that are agreed upon. Settling one's debt can be an emotionally draining and difficult process. Creditors' Incentives The creditor's primary incentive is to recover funds that would otherwise be lost if the debtor filed for bankruptcy. The other key incentive is that the creditor can often recover more funds than through other collection methods. Collection agencies and collection attorneys charge commissions as high as 40% on recovered funds. Bad debt purchases by portfolios of delinquent debts from creditors who give up on internal collection efforts and these bad debt purchases pay between 1 and 12 cents on the dollar, depending on the age of the debt, with the oldest debts the cheapest. Collection calls and lawsuits sometimes push debtors into bankruptcy, in which case the creditor often recovers no funds. Common Objections Damages credit. Credit reports will show evidence of debt settlements and the associated FICO scores will be lowered temporarily as a result. However, if a paid in full letter is obtained from the creditor, the debtor's credit report should show no sign of a debt settlement. Additionally, as debtors settle their accounts the score starts to go back up again. Some debt settlement companies offer credit repair in their programs in order to erase some of the negative remarks on credit reports. Potential for lawsuits, though few creditors wish to push borrowers toward bankruptcy. There's always the possibility of a lawsuit whenever debts lay unpaid. In the debt settlement process the debtor's accounts remain in default. While the debts are still in default the creditor or its assignee can still file a lawsuit against a debtor. Most creditors and debt collectors want a lump sum payment to settle for less than the full debt. Although a debtor may make monthly payments to the debt settlement company, the amount is too small to successfully negotiate a settlement until after the debtor has made several months worth of payments. Eligibility of debts. In addition, the specific debts of the borrowers themselves affect the success of negotiations. Tax liens and domestic judgments, for reasons that should be clear, remain unaffected by attempts at settlement. Student loans, even those not federally subsidized, have been granted special powers by recent legislation to attach bank accounts without possibility of Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection. Also, some individual creditors, including Discover Card, for example, tend to have an aggressive resistance against negotiations. Tax consequences Another common objection to debt settlement is that debtors whose debts are partially cancelled outside the bankruptcy system will need to report the cancelled portion of the debt as taxable income. The Internal Revenue Service considers any amount of forgiven debt as taxable income. The forgiving creditor must provide the taxpayer with a 1099C tax form for amounts $600 or greater. This form will list the amount of forgiven debt and interest in Box 2. However, the IRS does not require taxpayers to report forgiven debt if the taxpayer was insolvent at the time the creditor forgave the debt. Being insolvent means that the amount of a debtor's debts are greater than his, her assets. However, the IRS adds that, you cannot exclude any amount of cancelled debt that is more than the amount by which you are insolvent. For example, if a taxpayer is $10,000 in debt and owns $3,000 in assets, he, she cannot exclude more than $7,000 of forgiven debt from his, her income tax. Any forgiven debt over $7,000 that year must be reported as taxable income.